Hey, welcome back. So Sarah Silverman is suing both OpenAI and Meta, alleging that they used her 2010 book, The Bedwetter, to train their AI system. And the media is going crazy at the moment because this is your David versus Goliath story where authors are standing up against the AI companies. And this could be the landmark case which determines whether AIs will be allowed to ingest copyrighted material. There's just one problem though. I don't think ChatGPT or Llama have ever read the book. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why. Alrighty, so to do that, we actually need to look at the complaint that Sarah Silverman actually lodged. So right in front of me, I actually have a copy of that complaint. And if we look at exhibit B, this is the specific prompt that Sarah Silverman is claiming actually infringes her copyright. So if you can see here the prompt there, it is summarized in detail the first part of the bedwetter by Sarah Silverman. Now anyone who's watched my channel before know there's an immediate problem with that prompt. And that is, we don't know whether it's actually looking at the primary material to come back with that answer. So what do I mean by that? There's actually three sources that ChatGPT could be getting this data from. Number one is it could be getting it from the primary source, which is the book itself. Number two, it could be getting it from human feedback. So they've been asked this question before, and then a human reviewer has then provided an answer. And the third place it could be answering from is secondary source material, such as Wikipedia articles, forums, book reviews, where people are discussing the book, but not not actually providing the copyrighted material in the first place. And if we look at this prompt, it's not clear where it's getting that information from. It could be getting it from the book itself, it could be getting it from human feedback, or it could be summarizing from third party websites. Now don't get me wrong, I can understand why at first glance you may think that it's read the book, because the detail on this summary is really good. It's given an overview of the book, it's talking about where she grew up, it's talking about what happened in the first part of the book. So obviously jump to that conclusion that it's read the book, but remember this could have been a human who's read this and then ChatGPT is relying on that human summary. And it could be a human reviewer for who worked for OpenAI, or it could be from one of these secondary sources. It is not clear from these responses whether it's actually read that book. And if you want to, you can actually look at some of the responses ChatGPT itself gives. So if I open up ChatGPT for a second, and then I just paste in, summarize in detail the first part of The Bedwetter by Sarah Silverman, then you're gonna get a fairly good response. In fact, it's, it's not that indifferent to the response that you see in the complaint. It is different, but it's not that indifferent. Now there is a couple of things that is different from this version from ChatGPT compared to the Sarah Silverman complaint. As you can see in a Sarah Silverman complaint, it's actually saying, you know, the first part of the book largely deals with Silverman's childhood. It's talking about how it's divided into chapters. Whereas in this version, you know, ChatGPT has been really clear. I don't have access to the specific contents of the book. I can provide a general summary of the first part based on available information. So it's trying to handle this uh, legal stance of, no, 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 I haven't read the book at all. Uh, and clearly they've made an update since the uh, book has been published to get really specific that it hasn't read the book and that it is doing some sort of general summary. Now, if I wanted to, I could see what that earlier response would have looked like without all the legalese there. I could go into playground.openai.com forward slash playground, which is the OpenAI uh, API playground. And I could, if I want to select an earlier version of ChatGPT. So here you can see there's GPT-35 Turbo 0301. So if I just select that for a second, and then I can ask the same question, summarize detail, the first part of the bedwetter. And then if I hit submit here, I'm gonna get a similar answer to what Sarah Silverman would have got, which is it talks about the first part of the book, etc. But all of that uh, legalese stuff would have gone away, as you see, and it's given a, a bit of an answer. And as you see, there's no sort of, uh, you know, I'm summarizing, I'm generalizing. So now that we understand that, the question we really need to answer is how do we get past all of the human feedback and things like secondary sources and ensure that we're getting a response from the primary source, i.e. the book? 
And the answer is we need to read the primary source, the book itself, and then ask a question that only could be answered if the AI system had read the book in the first place, i.e. it's a question that wouldn't be covered by a secondary source and is a question that is not being altered by human feedback. So what I've done here is I've opened up one of the chapters in Sarah Silverman's Bedwetter book and there's a passage here about Dr. Riley's office was in a big Victorian house in Manchester, New Hampshire. He shared the house with one other or doctor, Dr. Groom who you may recall as a hypnotist who did not manage to hypnotize her. And then later on, you're gonna find that Dr. Riley hung himself, right? So there's a couple of bits of information we know here, and I've checked the internet, and really that information isn't available on the internet. So you are gonna to have to have read this book to be able to answer that question. So let's go to ChatGPT and see how it does. So to test that, we're gonna ask, who did Dr. Riley share a house with in Sarah Silverman's Bedwetter book? Let's see what it comes back with. And in this version, it says in Sarah Silverman's book, The Bedwetter Stories, <laughs> Dr. Riley shares a house with Sarah Silverman herself. The book is a memoir written by a Silverman. She recounts her experience growing up with Bedwetter and her relationship with Dr. Riley, her childhood therapist. So clearly this is not the right answer. We know, we know that Dr. Riley shared a house with Dr. Grimm and not Sarah Silverman herself. So it's it's not got the information and it's starting to hallucinate, i.e. it's making up answers. Let's ask another question. Did Dr. Riley die in the book? No, Dr. Riley did not die. And as we can see from the book itself, Dr. Riley hung himself. And we can challenge it. Uh, didn't he hang himself? And again, it's came back, I apologize for the confusion, you're correct, Dr. Riley's character does die by suicide. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then we can say, who found him? And then here we go, in the Bedwetter book, it's Sarah Silverman herself who discovers Dr. Riley, and we know that's not true, it's Dr. Grimm. We can say, where was Dr. Grimm's office? And of course, we know that's in New Hampshire. And then it's like, I couldn't find any specific information named Dr. Grimm or the context, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I'm asking fairly specific questions about the book that I know that isn't in any secondary sources, but it's just it just doesn't know the answers, right? It just doesn't know the answers. So when I come back to this summarize the book, it's clear that it's getting it from a secondary source. It could be a human, it could be uh, from a, a website, a Wikipedia a news article or something like that, but it's clearly never read the book or ingested the book because if it had it would be able to answer those specific questions and of course if i went to another uh book where i know where i know that the book has been ingested then it's going to be able to answer those questions but in this case it clearly hasn't now just for fun one of the other claimants in the book was christopher golden and his book ararat so again we could do the exact same thing so if we go to uh, exhibit B here and we find Ararat, you know. So if we look at the output again, you can see from the exhibit that they're using the same technique to summarize. Uh, and it's the same with the other book here, uh, Sandman Slim by Richard Cadry. But if I look at the response on Ararat, it's, it's again, Ararat's a thrilling supernatural horror level. It's not giving any specifics of the book. There's nothing testing that it's actually ingested the book. It's just coming back with stuff that it could have picked up from a secondary source whether it be a news article, a discussion forum, or human feedback, but there's nothing here that it really proves that it's coming from the book itself. So again, if we open up uh, my Kindle book here for a second, and we can just look at something like chapter two. So chapter two, a, a light rain fell on the streets of London, and nobody seemed to notice. Some of the people passing on King's Road had opened their umbrellas. So we know they're in London, it's raining, uh, they're on King's Road. So let's, let's ask questions. Um, in chapter two, of Christopher Golden's Ararat book. Uh, summarize what happened. So I'll use the same summarize technique as they were using. Okay, so it's, it's saying, ah, I apologize, I, I don't have access because it's licensed data. So again, it's it's getting in the way. Um, so there's clearly the safety mechanisms are jumping in, but we can, we can ask a bit further. Uh, you know, what road were they in 
in chapter two in the first paragraph. Yeah, again, I don't have access, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, let's 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 come back into, let's see if we can get around these safety things and let's go back into playground uh, open AI. And then I will just put this in here. In chapter two of Christopher Golden's Ararat book, summarize what happened. Let's see what happens. There we go. In chapter two of Christopher Golden's book, Ararat, the main characters, Adam Holzer and Mariam, arrive at the foot of the Mount Ararat in Turkey, blah, 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 blah. We know they're in London. Yeah, we've just read that. We know they're in London. But yeah, it's going on about uh, being at the foot of Mount Ararat in Turkey. It's not read the book. And again, I could go through this all day, but as you can see from the two examples there, both the Christopher Golden book and the Sarah Silverman book, ChatGPT, when we go that level below, we can see that it hasn't got access to those ingested data. And I've shown that with OpenAI's ChatGPT, but if I wanted to, I could do the exact same with uh, Meadows Llama. So I could ask who did Dr. Riley share has with in a Bedwetter book. We'll just hand, uh, set that to uh, Llama here. And you can see Dr. Riley shared a house with two other people, Sarah Silverman and Margarita Laviva, whoever that is. So again, I, the, the Meta's Llama model, I'm fairly sure has never read that book either. Is this gonna be the big landmark ruling where we find out whether AI systems are allowed to ingest copyrighted materials? The answer is no, because I think the claimants in this particular lawsuit, I don't think those AI systems have ever read their books.